Um, so, uh, Dorian, tell me more about um, what is it about early learning that is so important. We have really developed a lot of new programs across our country to, to uh, try to get children at a younger age into the schools. Why? Um, it's important because they start learning um, emotional and social skills with each other. So getting them into um, early learning in any age, even from birth to five, it's important because there's things that they're going to learn while they're in the classroom with other children and while they're interacting with them, with their peers. So being able to separate from their parents, um, learning that stuff is very important from a very young age. So when do they, when they do get to kindergarten, they have uh, mastered that skill and oh. then they can continue, um, they're open to learn in kindergarten and they're, that makes it easier for the teacher. Mm -hmm. And wow. I would imagine with some of the new um, criteria, I know that at least in the experience of our children, the educational standards, um, the difference between when my son, who's a sophomore, was in kindergarten and our seven-year-old now, what they were learning in kindergarten, in first grade, they're now learning in kindergarten. So I'd imagine early learning gets them a lot more prepared because they've kind of really upped the curriculum. Up the ante. And since yeah. we're about, uh, I think we're, uh, if, I, if I'm right about this, 24th in the world in terms of educational standards, um, then uh, this seems like an important part. Um, I'm wondering to what extent early learning is tied to family income. Hello? Jump in, ladies. Go ahead. Just jump. Jump right in. Patty? So it is. It's um, one of our requirements. Well, it goes on a 110 baseline federal poverty level which can be found on our site, or if you guys call in to our office, we can give you more information on that. But that's not our only um, way to qualify. Basically, if you have any other need, if your child does have a need special attention, special help, other education, IEPs, or you see that he needs more assistance, he or she needs more assistance in it, it's a great opportunity for them as well. So although that we do say it's um, income-based, there's also other other um, that's specifically for your program, and yes. and and that like is seems to me is getting at one of the issues, because if I'm not mistaken, early learning for children is tied to family income. As families have less money, they're often they don't have as many um, things in the home, for example, that might create stimulation for the child. Uh, the parents might be more preoccupied with getting food on the table than they are of nurturing or, you know, reading to the child, those kinds of things. Is that true? So the resources out there, it would be true, it would um, contribute to the child. So having them participate with us is another way to show not only the children but the families itself to become, to use what they do have at home to be able to prepare their children with what is available, not to necessarily make them feel like you have less. If not, just give them those tools to know how to utilize what they do have yeah. to make their child succeed. So the program that you are involved in is actually geared towards let's find families where children could use a little extra help and let's get them involved in this program. So by the time that they hit kindergarten and first grade, they're more at, hopefully, at an even level. Is that a fair uh, analysis? Yeah, it's a very fair analysis. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about your program specifically, and I know that you have a grant to add more children in rural areas. Right, so we did have 110 slots, and we did get um, added, so... 155? So yes, yes, 155. So okay. we're going to 265 slots to serve families in rural areas. Um, there are Pasco, Mesa, Connell, Otelo, Finley, Burbank, Prescott. So these are our sites that we we have around. Okay, how do children get there? I mean, is there transportation? We are working with the school districts, so we have transportation with the school districts, and they're taking them from a bus stop to their uh, schools, and then from their school back to their homes. All right, is this a half day program? We have half day and full day. Uh, it just depends on which they get enrolled in. Oh, ah, okay. And, and it right. also is, um, what the family needs, so if they're going to school, if they're going full-time to school, if they stay half day at home, um, it just depends on our families and what their needs are. Mm -hmm. We've got a caller on the line, so let's go ahead and add them to our conversation today. 
All right. Okay. At our program at ECAP ESD 123, we try to help all of our children learn manners and being able to work with other children their age and even older children. Um, we try to teach them with that. Yes, you're right. I do believe, and we all believe that um, the parent is the first teacher, so the parent is always going to be our one, number one person to go to. But we also encourage parents to send the children to school, so we can also, if the parents don't have resources or don't understand the um, appropriate way to discipline a the child, then we might give them those resources to be able to do that with them. This is pretty much standard operating procedure right now in the world of education. Um, to ha get children involved in preschool. I mean, we're not talking about this program being for just a special group of people. Uh, what we're, what I think that they're doing is trying to get more people involved in what is now standard thinking mm -hmm. in the world of education. And that you the younger we can uh, deal with children, the better they are prepared. Whether it's early education or preschool, um, we have two children that went through a very good program at TriTech, and whether you go to a private or a public, you know, it is good. We've seen the benefits of getting our little ones around other kids, and when they come out of the preschool or the early education, they can start to read, write their name, and it's as much about socially learning how to deal with other kids, because we've all seen the pictures of the kid that goes to school in kindergarten the very first day, and it's... It, you know, it's kind of sad that you see the child clinging on to mommy's leg because they've never really been out of the house or maybe they live where there's not a lot of other children and they have a very good, very difficult time. So as far as the, um, you know, you made some valid points, but whether it's a, a preschool or tri-tech or early education, the bullying thing, they keep a very, the number of, of adults to children, the ratio is incredible. And they keep a very close eye on them because I used to go up there and watch uh, Harley. Yeah. And they keep a close eye on them. Let's take a break right here, but we'll be back because I think it will be uh, interesting to talk about how parents are involved or can be involved in some of these preschool programs. So stay with us. This is Meet in the Middle. I'm Christine Brown, and it is Friday. Um, my guests today are from Early Childhood Education and Assistance Program. It's a program that's under the ESD, which is the Educational Service District. Uh, my guests are Patty Garcia and uh, Dorian Arthria, and they're both early learning coordinators. But the research shows that early education does have a very positive uh, impact on uh, children's learning and then their abilities as an adult. So that is the trend of where it's moving towards. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how your program involves parents, because it's one thing, I guess, just to deal with a child in an environment, but providing training for families and uh, new information, I think, is always uh, useful. Do you do that? Yes, we do. We offer, um, ECAP offers a whole child. So it's focused on the child in the classroom and also the families in, that we serve. So we have a family support specialist that works with our families in reaching their needs. So it just depends um, on what their, what their needs and what their family needs are, then our family support specialist helps with that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so I want to know, maybe your program is new, but what kind of a difference is it making in people's lives? Do you have any examples? Um, We've also worked with, um, with our program, we work with uh, the dental and health of the children and mm -hmm. the nutrition, so being able to offer those services to them. Um, if the families haven't taken them to the dentist or they have, but they haven't received um, the proper care after they've gone to the screening, so we refer them to that and then being able to. And we have seen cases that children need, they have cavities when after our screening, so we have to get them to the proper dental location so they can get those fixed. 
Okay, so they're fixing some of those problems at a younger age and not letting them turn into bigger problems later on. How do people learn about your program? What if uh, you have some slots that are still available out of this 155 on your grant? How can people learn about that and, and in, their, in more rural communities? Where do they go? They can go to our website, which is the ESD123, um, just slash ECAP, or they can even call by calling us at 544 um, We're happy to answer any questions they have there. And we are, we still have all, a lot of slots open, so we are welcoming applications and calls or anything that we can assist them to, to get them. We've also been working with the school district, so going to their open houses and being out there. Um, we'll also be at the public library on September 23rd, passing out flyers and uh, applications and questions that people want to ask. Mm -hmm. So, so well, I mean, what school district? All of them, or oh, okay. we're um, with us. We're working with the school districts that we have classrooms. So again, that's Pasco, Mesa, Connell, Othello, Finley, Burbank, and Prescott. All right. Ladies, thank you very much for talking to us today about early childhood education and your program, which is Early Childhood Education and Assistance Program through the ESD. And uh, if you want to learn more, contact the, them at ESD. We're back in just a moment. Stay with us.